Hello everyone, this is Ray Space, and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In the video on the big one, as I called it, the Super Heavy with four Super Heavy boosters, I expanded the boosters in order to get a half-fueled Starship into orbit, so 750 tons total. And that was not really acceptable to me. I did not feel like that was good enough, and that was partly because I have a solution for launching a fully fueled starship directly into orbit and that has been my previously introduced uh, Aerospike SSTO at uh, Daenerys. Uh, called Daenerys after the character in Game of Thrones who was the mother of dragons uh, not because I particularly like the character or approve of uh, what the character did, but because uh, the shape of this happens to be shaped like a dragon, and so it's like the mother of dragons, so that's why I call it Daenerys. Uh, so, yeah, uh, this is an SSTO similar to an uh, old proposal by, I think it was Chrysler, called the Merv, or Merv, uh, something like that, and it, it would have a, a thing, a reusable spacecraft on top of it like this, and it would have a body like that, and it would be a reusable stage to boost that into orbit. And if I'm correct, it was Chrysler. Chrysler uh, proposed this to NASA, even though NASA specifically said that they should not propose anything with an aerospike. <laughs> so NASA said no aerospikes, and they gave them an aerospike. So this is an aerospike. This is way larger in scale than anything that they proposed, of course. That was uh, for in the very, very early part of the space shuttle development program. They were looking for some sort of reusable spacecraft, but they hadn't really settled on anything in particular yet. And this was one proposal. Uh, well, not this one. Again, a much smaller one than this was the proposal. I made this uh, using the same engine I used for the Monument rocket, but the Monument rocket has boosters. These aren't boosters, these are landing engines. Uh, we'll get to that in a sec. But this is designed to launch Starship. However, Starship has gotten a bit heavier since I actually designed it, so I don't know if it can launch Starship to orbit fully fueled. Uh, it's a bit, oops, it's a bit heavy fully fueled these days. Um, we've only got 8,254, so I don't think quite that much. Uh, if we underfuel it a little bit, I think we'll be in better shape. It's complicated with SSTOs. So if we've got a 1,152 ton Starship, maybe we can do it. Let's try that first. And I'm going to lock it like that. So 80% fueled. And that's still a better capacity than the 20,000 ton big one. There's only 17,552 tons, I say only. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's still better because Hydrolox. Hydrolox is wonderful, right? And uh, I'm sure it'll be easy to fuel this up. But we do have Mephalox landing engines. These are, each of these has two Raptor engines inside. And actually, I should tweak that down so that the flap doesn't clip the bottom of this. Uh, so yeah, there's a little protective flap and then they open up and so there's 16 Raptors total in order for this to land because the dry mass of all this is a little over 1,000 tons dry. So the dry mass of the Daenerys is about the same as the wet mass of Starship. So it's not like I've skimped on the dry mass and made it all balloon tanks or anything. It's not like that. Uh, but most of well, the, most of the mass is the tank at 651 tons, and then the landing system is a little bit more. And then 326 tons is the aerospike engine at the bottom, and that's because the aerospike engine is made up of M1 chambers, the chambers of the largest hydrogen-oxygen engine ever developed, uh, never launched, but developed. And so we have 36 of those and they get the stats you see, well, combined they get the stats you see here. So we've got 36 engines, total developing 281,000 kilonewtons in vacuum, 446 seconds of ISP in vacuum, which is actually pretty, I mean, it's probably better than they should get, but it's an aerospike. So, you know, uh, the nozzle thing is a little bit complicated. Uh, we've got that curve working for us. And actually, the Monument one actually has a trap door with five more engines in the bottom there. I added that later. Uh, but yeah, this one doesn't. It's just the 36. And yeah, I'm thinking about what else. I, I probably would do this differently now. So in order to come back down, the Aerospike has a shield like that. 
I would probably not have this extension bit. I just have the shield covered that part instead of having this additional bit. That additional bit is helpful though, because this additional bit allows it so that it can float a little bit better. Yeah, the displacement of water thanks to that area, though of course you're submerging the... If you actually put it in water, you're submerging the engine. So really you want chopsticks for this somehow. Uh, how the chopsticks are going to work with something shaped like this, I have no idea. But maybe because of the flaps, you could sort of chopstick the flaps in a way, or, or have a platform where the flaps help you... So it sits on the flaps, but that's a lot of pressure on the flaps. Uh, the flaps help add drag for it to recover, so the, they are re-entry flaps. Uh, probably the whole thing ought to be heavier than I've made it, but gosh, we're already under-fueling Starship to get it to orbit. My, uh, my intention with it was just 1,000 tons to orbit, so we're trying to push it a little bit, but I think it's probably still 1,000 tons to orbit. But let's see. Let's see if it can do the 1,150 that we have up there right now. So it looks like this, and if you hear some whirring in the background later on, that's because of my graphics card struggling thanks to RSS Reborn. <laughs> um, the volumetric clouds in particular really make it work hard at higher altitudes. Uh, previously it had frame rate issues at higher altitudes, but it doesn't have that anymore with the RTX 4070. I used to have a 2070, uh, but it still has to work hard, so sorry about that. But anyway, SAS on, throttles up, ignition. Oh, not with the flaps. Whoops. Hold on. We do have a lot of ignitions. Let's re shield. Just like that. Okay. Okay, and launch. The plume is sort of very light, interestingly enough, but there it is. In principle, it would uh, not gimbal. The engines would have differential thrust. I mean, the chambers would have differential thrust. It's just one engine. As with most aerospikes, the pumpage is at the bottom of the spike, or inside the spike. So, um, all the turbo pump stuff. And turbo pump exhaust would actually go down through the middle. So there it is. Not your normal kind of rocket, but also I was already thinking of this when I made the the raptor cone, obviously. After making the video on the big one, I was thinking of doing another video on this because I haven't launched this in a long, long time. I think this was way too steep. Got this weird secondary ring there, I've got to figure out what to do with. I just used one of the preset plumes for it. This is real plume still. Normally this would use the monument launcher pad, but I don't have that in this install. This is the shuttle install for Giulio Dondi's shuttle. So, I have some things, but not all the things. in order to fit the clouds, basically, or uh, RSS Reborn. Ah, uh, it's not gonna be enough. It wasn't a very good trajectory. We lofted a little bit high. But I think, on balance, we, we can't carry 1,150. So, it was supposed to carry a fully fueled starship, but probably a lighter starship. But we'll see what Starship can do after I launch it. So let's say this much, and how much is that really? It's a thousand tons. And then there's a decoupler here, but let's just call it a thousand tons. And that's why I designed Daenerys to do. Monument was designed for 3,000 tons, and Daenerys was designed for 1,000 tons. Okay, trying this again. And raising the shield. Okay, go on. The spool up time is like seven seconds, so. Okay. 
Off we go. We do have to have it reserve enough fuel to deorbit itself, though. Especially if it's going to try and come down to some sort of landing facility where the flaps are going to help catch it. It has to get to orbit first. Well, I say that, but then they really brought Starship down pretty close to that buoy on the most recent test flight, so maybe it doesn't need to go to orbit first. Normally, you think, okay, well, it's better to go to orbit first if you're really going to do a pinpoint landing, but, well, maybe that's not necessary. I think it's Stoke Space that is making a upper stage with an air spike that would be sort of like this and reusable. Well, it's not perfect right now. But we'll just try and have Starship finish it at the end. And it'll be on a suborbital trajectory and hopefully it can control that a little bit. I think what I'm being... this was designed before residuals. And... Oh, I'll need to check the engine to see the residuals. We've got 1.15% residuals. That might be just enough to cut out the margin that I'm looking at here. Yeah, they had not implemented residuals when I designed this. The little uh, twin Raptor booster pods are slap-on pods, so they can be used for anything. What else you would use it for is a good question. Sort of weirdly serene, I feel like. Okay, that's as far as it got, so 7,516. And let's get that decoupler. Just make sure this is stable for a sec here. You. Well, it's still got some residuals for the RCS system. The RCS can use all that. Um, if we just prep that, how much delta V is that exactly? 255 for the landing. So, not a huge amount. But okay. Let's unlock the fuel here. And maybe we can sell this down. All right. Okay, we are in orbit. And how much do we have? Well, 937 tons, which is sadder than I was hoping for. Maybe I should put the full monument version of the engine on the bottom of, of the Daenerys. You know, with the five extra engines. I don't know if more thrust weight ratio will really help, because after all, you're getting a lot of drag with that thing. That's not... you don't really want to punch through the atmosphere. It's not like a really slim rocket or anything. So, yeah. But we've got 6,670 meters per second. Uh, so we can certainly go to the moon. And I'm just gonna bloody land the thing. Uh, now, I didn't line up with the moon, but we can do an off-plane transfer. With the flaps, I don't care. <laughs> and it's got to be stranded there. They'll, they'll cut it apart for spare parts to use for a base. That's what I'm going to say. We're basically delivering more than 100 tons of steel, plus some tiles. But there's a question of whether I could possibly land the darn thing, because I've been always apprehensive about that. Well, that's a very polarish orbit. We like that, don't we, right? That's what we're supposed to be doing. Right there. Well, the chances I'll hit that exactly are slim, but we'll try that. We're really cutting close to the atmosphere here. Ideally, it would have landing legs. <laughs> yep. Ideally, it'd be Lunar Starship. All right, ignition. Okay.
All right, well, they're a little bit too powerful for me to do anything too much more precise than that right there, but we're not too far off. RCSing it. Well, we're not gonna end up like that, we're gonna end up like this, but that's okay too. All right, and that leaves us with 3,548. So the thing is, even if we did have a fully topped off starship, I don't know what more we could do exactly. Um, I don't know if we could like land and then get back to orbit again. I'm expecting that I'm going to need 2,400 to land at least, at least, probably more than that. Um, top end, maybe 3,000. So that doesn't that gives us 500 left and even if it's topped off I don't think we'd have enough to get back to orbit around the moon again which takes about 2000. So I mean that's conservative. We could do with a little bit less but not too much less. So yeah. But if you left off the flaps we'd probably have a little bit more delta v. So anyway, onward to the moon. Didn't really put any way to regenerate electric charge, but there seems to be a lot of charge on here. It keeps like not configuring my windows. I swear I keep doing this and it keeps losing it. Well, it happens to be lit down there and that's pretty darn the south pole. Maybe I should just come straight down. Seems to be slightly tilting towards Earth at that location. I mean the orbit. So could potentially have comms there. One thing, we don't have landing engines, uh, the nicer landing engines, so this is going to be hard. <laughs> We're probably going to have to land with the sea level engines, actually. Well, that's Earth, but there's Saturn in the background, that little dot Saturn. Moon South Pole. Do I have them gimbal in or have them splayed out? I don't even know. Probably it would have been more efficient if I had them all gimbaled in already. They only splay out to avoid damaging Super Heavy or in this case Daenerys, I suppose. So we've captured. I'm just gonna come straight down now. Now we're not carrying any payload, but because of the extra extra delta V that we have, presumably we could have traded off that uh, that delta V for some payload. We can see what is possible with Daenerys and Starship later on, but maybe I should have the better version of the well. I don't know. I don't. I still don't know if better thrust weight ratio initially will really make a much of a difference because of the drag. Okay, I'm just gonna have the sea level ones. The vacuum ones here aren't gonna gimbal, so I don't know if we want gimbling. Um, it's a good question. But 1,500 should do the trick. I'm probably not going to land it very well though. It's too overpowered and it's too tall. <laughs> oh, it's Midlands now. Gosh, we overshot the, the South Pole. It still seems like the South Pole to me. I don't know. But I guess that's more of the South Pole. We're a little bit off to the side of the South Pole. Oh nuts, oh nuts, oh nuts. <laughs> uh, should I turn on the vacuums? I need the vacuums. Oh, okay, okay, oh no, oh no, I did too much. I did too much. Oh gosh, can I get control over it? Oh no. No, come on. No, quickly. 
Oh boy. Let's get those on. No! Aww. Well, yeah, I'm gonna have to work on the moon landings, but I need a lunar starship. The Finns survived. <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, but that was that, that, that was just reintroducing Daenerys, the Aerospike SSTO, for use with the rapid deployment of Starship to the moon. Um, we'll work on it. That's yeah, we'll work on it. Maybe I'll need to scale Daenerys up, as horrible as that idea might be. Um, Finn's still going there. All right, well, there you have it. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.